ready to travel to El Salvador. In this seven day El Salvador itinerary, I'm going to share with you everything I know about Central America's smallest country. So what is El Salvador really like? Is it the safest to visit in El Salvador in 2023 and in 2024? What about for solo travelers and backpackers? And where are the best places to visit in El Salvador? In this seven day El Salvador itinerary, I'm going to answer all of those questions and many more. This will help you to plan your trip to El Salvador. Let's get started with the video. Welcome to the perfect seven day El Salvador itinerary. It's your pilot Royal and I'm going to be taking you guys on a journey throughout the seven days of you visiting El Salvador where I'm going to go over different tips and tricks that you guys should know before you board your plane or before you drive across to El Salvador. El Salvador officially known as the Republic of El Salvador is a country in Central America. It has land borders with Honduras, Guatemala, and a sea border with Nicaragua. For today's video, I'm going to be going over a couple different topics to help you with your travels to El Salvador. One, when is the best time to go? How to get to El Salvador? Visa requirements? Languages? Currency? how to get around El Salvador, as well as what I would recommend for you to do for your seven days or less of visiting the savior or my beloved El Salvador. The first topic, when should you travel to El Salvador? The dry season for El Salvador or the summer runs between November and April. The wet season runs from May to October. Claire and I have visited in February, March, April, and May, and the weather was dry and super warm, depending on the location that you are visiting of El Salvador. The weather in El Salvador tends to be around the mid 80s to sometimes in the countryside, the high 95 degrees with very high chances with humidity, which makes it very, very hot. How to get to El Salvador. El Salvador is actually quite a small country. You can get from one end to the other end in about four to five hours of driving time. This means that there is only about one to two airports in the country. One is located in San Salvador and the other one is located in San Miguel. You can fly directly into San Salvador through their international airport. You can get these flights to El Salvador from a variety of different locations and the US has many, many direct flights into El Salvador. The busiest routes to fly into El Salvador are going to come from Los Angeles, California, Houston, Texas, Washington, DC, Miami, Florida, New York City in New York, and last, last, last but not least, Dallas, Texas. If you are traveling by bus or on land, which Claire and I have not done into El Salvador, you can take a multiple of different routes into El Salvador from the shuttle buses that are coming from Guatemala, from Nicaragua, Honduras, and the neighboring countries. Visa requirements. El Salvador is part of the Central American Agreement between El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala, and Nicaragua. Basically what this means is, is that once you have admission into any one of these four countries, you have admission into the other ones that you are trying to visit within the four. This agreement gives tourists ourselves 90 days to travel in any of these four countries, not 90 days in each country, 90 days for all four countries, which is a common mistake. You can request a 30 day extension, which gives you, which gives you an additional 120 days within the four countries. But Claire and I have never stayed. Claire and I haven't overstayed our 90 days within El Salvador at this time. So we are not necessarily sure on the process for the 30 day to 100 day extension. 
languages. The official language in El Salvador is Spanish. Most of the cities and towns speak Espanol. So you will need to freshen up and learn as much Spanish as you can, which will help a lot. Some of the locals do speak some English, but I always err on a side of caution to learn or try to speak the native language of any country that you visit to. Hola is hello. Gracias is thank you. And por favor is please. Those three will do you a lot of good if you can remember those. Currency. Let's talk about the money. Money, 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 money. Money. If you have, if, excuse me, if your home currency is the United States dollar, there is no need to swap or exchange your money. The United States has been an official currency of El Salvador since 2001. But it is a good idea to get some small bills. What I have noticed is is most of, most of the time the most of the time El Salvador uh, most of the time Salvadoreños use the dollar coin as a dollar bill. Obviously with a dollar bill here in the US it gets beat up and most of the time it fades the most. It's the most beaten up dollar in the US currency. Salvadoreños tend to use the dollar coin and they will give you change with that dollar coin if you are trying to break any of your dollar bills. Most businesses probably will accept $20 bills, but 50s and 100s can be harder to break. ATMs that I found are readily available in very common areas at the mall, commercial areas, etc. And they will allow you to withdraw money in English for the easiness of doing that they have also adapted the second national currency of bitcoin the government requires that all businesses accept the digital currency but i've noticed that some of them do and some of them don't so err on the side of caution when trying to use your bitcoin that you do have other currencies that you'll be able to use whether that be the u.s dollar or if you're coming from europe the euros how to get around el salvador there are a bunch of different transportation methods that you can use in El Salvador, like the bus, minivans, taxis, or even a car rental while you are in the country traveling around. What Claire and I have noticed is, is that for us and the traveling that we are trying to do, it's a lot more efficient and time saving for us to rent a car. For you guys, what I'll do is I will put the Instagram of the car rental company that we use here on the screen as well as down below in the description so that if you are taking a trip to El Salvador you can use the same car rental company that we use the car rental start anywhere from 30 to 60 dollars per day and driving here is relatively relatively safe compared to other Central American countries as the roads are getting much and much better maintained I will, rec I will recommend that you purchase a camioneta or a truck because some of the roads aren't as good as others and at times it can be a little rocky. But again, depending on where you're going, you might be safe in regards to the road conditions or you might need that 4x4 truck, camioneta, to get around. But to each his own. Now, let's talk about the fun part of this trip we've gotten all of the information that you need in regards to how to get around how to get to el salvador the visa requirements etc etc but you're really here for the seven day itinerary right you want me to tell you where you want to go for the seven days of travel while you are in el salvador well let's get started with day number one you're flying into san Salvador the flights are going to be coming at all different kind of times right some are going to come in the morning some are going to come in the afternoon or in the evening for me I love to catch the red eye flight 1159 1158 flying from LAX and landing in San Salvador at five o'clock six o'clock in the morning what I love about the rental company is is that they will actually be waiting for us when we land to hand over the car to us 
after they hand over the car to us, just to, just to let you know, there is about a 30 to maybe even 45 minute drive if you are driving to the city of San Salvador automatically. So that means that you're not going to get into town until about 7 a.m. After you get into town, I always love to go to Pollo Camperro. Is that where we go, baby? Go to Pollo Camperro for breakfast. Y'all, I eat American breakfast when we in America. But like they say, when, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. When in El Salvador, do as the Salvadoreños do. You got to get yourself a Salvadorian breakfast in the morning. 7.30 in the morning, Pollo Camperro with that what is that that orange juice oh that's some good breakfast in the morning after that flight with those biscuits oh my, i hate those biscuits on those flights we gotta start flying first class a lot more often but first day you're just doing the traveling day right you gotta get to your airbnb if you're staying in san salvador if you're staying in san miguel if you're staying in barra de santiago wherever you're staying it's pretty much just a day for you to get there kind of get situated, relax a little bit. You just flew into town. What I would highly recommend is, is for you to figure out a place that you can have a nice dinner at after you land in San Salvador for the first day. The first day is a travel day. Now, when you wake up tomorrow morning for the second day, I got a special plan for you guys. We are going to climb one of the most active and the tallest volcano in el salvador the beautiful part about this is is that when you arrive in san salvador you will actually be able to see one of the volcanoes that sits on the outskirts of the city which is amazing that's amazing but this volcano that you're actually going to be climbing is the santa Ana volcano it is approximately about 90 minutes driving time from el salvador to hike this volcano again it's going to be about 90 minutes to hike up coming down it's about a 45 minute hike coming down now for all of my people that aren't staying up to date on your fitness you might feel like oh wow 90 day hike 90 minute hike is going to be a lot this hike isn't one of those kind of crazy hikes it's actually not too bad if i'm going to judge it on a scale from one to ten this hike is about a five maybe even a six there are points throughout this hike when you go with a tour guide that they give you a rest stop and you guys sit there, admire the view. At times you'll be in the midst of the clouds so that you won't see too far and it's not too vast, but it's not that bad of a hike. Super easy hike, five out of six for you guys to do this hike. Once you get to the top of this volcano, just admire looking at an active volcano. To my surprise, it's not spewing the red lava and the orange colors and you feel like you're, you know, about to die. It's nothing like that. It's very calm. It's quiet while you're up there. There's other people that are doing this hike as well with you. It's a beautiful sight. It's actually really, really cool. And if I were to go back to El Salvador, I would definitely do this hike again because it's cool to see and hike the volcano. While you are at the top of Santa Ana Volcano, you will be able to see our next destination for today. After you climb back down the mountain, you are going to make a quick 45 minute drive over to Lake Guatepeque. This is a super cool lake and I highly recommend everybody to do this on their excursion following the hike of the Santa Ana Volcano because it actually has an island that people live on. They just have to take a boat or a ferry across to in the middle of this lake crater. If I'm not mistaken, I think this used to be a volcano, but it basically just imploded, fell on top of itself, and it is no longer a volcano. What's really cool is, is at Lake Guatepeque, people actually live on the shallow side, on the inside of this crater all around this lake, predominantly on one side, but throughout this entire lake. When you get down to the lake, you'll find all kind of restaurants, souvenir shops, places for you to eat. Even some there, even though there are some high end restaurants that are also within this Lake Guatepeque crater as well. And it's super cool that you can not only see it from the top of 
the volcano so you know exactly where you're going so you can get a bird's eye view of it as well as experience Lake Huatepec from the ground level. Highly recommend you guys do these two different activities or excursions within the same day since they are very close and accessible from one to the other. After finishing Lake Guatepeque, you guys are gonna shoot on home. This has been a long day. You guys have gotten in some exercising. You have been in the sun all day. You guys have been moving and driving all around. So it's gonna be about another hour, maybe an hour and a half back to San Salvador where you guys are staying. For day three, we are gonna go to Termales de Santa Teresa or the hot springs of Santa Teresa. What I really like about these hot springs are they are actually heated from the volcano itself. When it comes to El Salvador's attractions, this one should be on the list. This is actually quite an undiscovered hidden gem of El Salvador and some backpackers know about it. Some people that are coming to El Salvador know about it, but not everyone knows about Termales de Santa Teresa or the hot springs. It is really, really cool to check this place out. A lot of the locals know about it as well. You know, I love a good hot spring. I'm all about the jacuzzi, getting in the hot shower. I love that part. I love hot water. My mom always used to give me super hot baths as a little boy. So I love the hot water. Claire, Claire hates the hot water. She likes lukewarm water. She likes cold water, nothing hot at all when it comes to Clarissa, except for her cafe. That woman loves coffee. She likes her coffee hot as hell. But with Santa Teresa, it is such a cool experience. You got all kind of different things that you could do here. This would definitely be a trip that you can take your entire family to, from the little kids all the way up to the adults. They will enjoy this activity. They have hot springs of different temperatures throughout this entire area. It's a pretty big area as well. They'll have some that are scorching hot as well as some that are almost kind of like water temperature, like drinking water cold. Some of these hot springs are really close from one another while other ones are a little bit further from one another as well, which I really like about this. They have really good food there. They got some American food there, chicken wings, chicken tenders. They got your cervezas, your pills and their beers for my Salvadoreños. So if you guys want to come here and bring the entire family, this is definitely a place where you guys can do that at. They have a cool, you know, attraction here as well. When it comes to Santa Teresa, the hot springs, you can do a mud bath. And with the mud bath, what we experienced was they have some of the minerals and substances that you'll put on your face, your cara, while you have other minerals that you'll put throughout your entire body, which you guys are seeing right now on the screen. This experience, this attraction probably takes about 20 minutes. You got five minutes of you putting this stuff on. You have to sit in the sauna, which is really cool too. It's all nature, all kind of organic stuff, which is going on in there for about five to 10 minutes. And then you have to come out, put on some more and then you go back in and it's a complete experience. This does come at an additional cost. So do keep that in mind. If I'm not mistaken, I think this was anywhere between five to like eight, maybe even $10 now uh, per person, but it was very affordable and very inexpensive. After we did this, we kind of went back up and kind of chilled with the rest of the family. You know, Salvadoreños are all about their Macas, so there were plenty of macas throughout the entire um, attraction with Santa Teresa that you guys will be able to lay on with your kids and be able to talk, chit chat, have a good time in um, El Salvador. After you guys finish your excursion at Thermales de Santa Teresa, depending on which direction you came from, I think you should definitely check out the nearby city of Ataco. Ataco is a really small pueblo that has different things that are going on, but it's kind of cool to check out like a small town in El Salvador, which is what we did. We went here and we were able to go to the La Ca La, the, the cathedral, excuse me, I don't, I don't wanna butcher the sound or butcher it, the La Catri, I don't know, I'm not gonna butcher it, but you can go check out the cathedral, which was really nice. 
it's kind of cool walking on this street too because this street kind of gives me like the old school vibes where it's big pebbles on the ground and it goes throughout the entire city it's even in you know the mountainous range where you can see the mountains off in the the outskirts etc they have a grocery store that's kind of like an outdoor grocery store they got plenty of stores and like souvenir shops so if you guys want to come here and buy anything i would definitely recommend that you guys check out this town because the prices are probably going to be a little bit more affordable than going to some of your bigger cities every country that i go to brand new i always like to bring back a bandera or a flag from that country i was actually able to find this flag here in this city of Ataco, which was really cool. So it's definitely a nice little city for you guys to check out while you are experiencing and learning about the different culture that you'll be able to see in El Salvador. After you do this, that's gonna be it for the day. I don't wanna tire you guys out too much, have you guys running all around El Salvador because there is just so much that you can actually do throughout El Salvador. So after you finish with your time in Ataco, we're gonna head on back to the house and we're gonna get started for day four. For day four, I always like to have a day of rest. Even though we're traveling to these different countries and we're always thinking about, hey, we gotta go here, we gotta go there, we gotta go everywhere. I always try to leave a day that allows us to plan what we want to do for that day. When we go to these different countries, there will be times where you will pass things that will catch your eye. There will be times where you see things that you want to go and explore. Or there are times where locals will tell you to visit certain areas as, a, as well. So I always like to leave a day of unplanned activities for us to find those hidden gems while on this vacation or on this experience for us to do and to enjoy. So that's why I challenge you to talk to some of the locals and ask them where are some cool places that you can visit? Where are the next and up and coming spots that you can check out and use this rest day, day four, as an opportunity for you to go to some of those places or explore some of those things that you passed or that you saw or that you want to check out. That's not necessarily on this list for my seven day perfect itinerary of exploring el salvador for day five we are going to be going to mizata to go and explore the naui beach house when i say naui beach house this isn't necessarily a house this is a resort and this resort comes with a lot of different amenities that you are going to want it to that you are going to want to enjoy enjoy a slice of paradise in one of the most famous and up and coming spots of El Salvador. After El Salvador, after El Salvador gets hot, guys, this spot is going to be the number one spot that people are going to be checking out. For sure. For sure. Where it's located, it's going to be located in a nicer place. They are building the outside areas of this whole entire resort. So this is going to be a hot spot, a hot topic for anybody that's going to be coming to El Salvador. Here you will be able to enjoy a nice drink, great food, and most important, you will have a time of your life by yourself or with friends. Some of the things to do is that you'll be able to swim along in the pool, have a suntan, get a horseback ride, use the beach gym, the outside beach gym, as well as stay late and watch the beautiful sunsets on the cabanas that they have sitting on the beach. Cool, 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 very cool experience. They do offer a full experience, including a day pass, which we partake in, starting at around 8.30 a.m. at your hotel. You know, you can drive down to the Naui Beach House and you guys can just sit there and relax for the whole entire day. Claire and I got there about maybe nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, and we stayed for several hours, like five, six, seven, eight hours for the whole day. We stayed on the cabana. We got drinks. We got food. The food was good. It Again, for all of my Salvadoreños, thank you so much. You guys are such great people. I enjoy coming back to you guys' country 
every single year. We always go back every year and I'm looking forward to going back this year. The prices are always affordable. They are very inexpensive. So come down here, get some good food. All of my sea lovers, you guys will love El Salvador. El Salvador does a great job of getting fresh and healthy fish and knowing how to cook it very well. So I plan on definitely coming back to Naui Beach House when we return to El Salvador because it's just a really good time. Now we are coming on our final two days. I'm going to be talking to you guys about the probably the most popular city, the most hottest thing to do when you are traveling to El Salvador. Everybody knows this big time surfers all know about this place. It is called El Tunco or Surf City. El Tunco Surf City is the number one destination that most people are coming to when they are visiting El Salvador. Along with the affordable prices, the very good seafood, the beautiful people, my Salvadoreño people, mi gente, El Salvador has some of the best surfing that you can get in the world. They literally have a competition down here every year that the best surfers come down to because of how great the food the surfing as well as the people are here in El Tunco and Surf City. And guys, I don't know if you know, surfers know how to party. And surfers party hard. They surf during the morning, they rest in the midday, and they party hard at night. El Tunco is one of the party cities of El Salvador. When do you want to go down there if you're going to be trying to party in El Tunco with the Salvadoreños and the other tourists that are visiting from other countries outside of El Salvador? You either want to go on a Friday night or a Saturday night. That is when it's jumping and it's popping in El Salvador in El Tunco Surf City. So that's why I recommend that you guys check out El Tunco for two days. You'll be able to get some surfing lessons on one day and you'll be able to party and chill and enjoy the beach vibes at nighttime at the beach clubs that they have throughout El Tunco. El Tunco has several beach pl uh, clubs, beach parties all throughout the night. Some of these places are closing down at two o'clock in the morning. Some of them are at three and you are not too far from La Libertad, a nearby city that has clubs and bars as well that close later around three and four a.m. Just be mindful not to drink and drive. Try to catch a taxi, which they are always readily available driving throughout Surf City or El Tunco when you are visiting El Salvador. Guys, that was your seven days. I've taken you all around El Salvador. We've been on we've been in the central part of El Salvador. We've been on the west side of El Salvador, the north side, as well as the south side. We have been throughout El Salvador right now, you guys have been able to get a very big and good glimpse of the many different things that El Salvador that El Salvador has to offer. And I thank you guys for watching all the way to the end of this video. Please guys, when you go and you come back, tell your friends, tell your family, tell everybody that you know how great a country El Salvador is. And that is one of the countries that are on the up and coming that is going to be hitting this globe and blowing up. El Salvador is doing a lot of great things down there with every country. We have it. They have its pros as well as they have its cons. But El Salvador is one of those hidden gems. It's not like Mexico where everybody knows about Mexico and the prices are really high and affordable at times. But with El Salvador, El Salvador is hot right now. El Salvador is a place to go. El Salvador is a place to be. There's a lot of great changes that are coming in El Salvador. And I am thankful that I have gone down there with Claire and Claire's family for her to show me the beautifulness that is coming from El Salvador and how it will change for the better with time that it comes. So, guys, go down to El Salvador, experience your seven day vacation there. Hit me up in the comments if you guys like what I said. If I if you guys didn't, please tell me how I can make this better. I'd be glad to help you guys out. We will be going down to El Salvador in the coming months, which I'll be able to come back and tell you guys even more experiences that I've had and that you should explore and see for yourself, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's been your man Royal. 
Claire as well has helped me a lot with all of these videos and this travel guide. So I will be plugging her information down below in the description. Nonetheless, guys, thank you for watching and staying all the way to the end of this video. It has been Royal and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Thank you.